There is a United Nations law under the United Nations Charter, number 22, that says persons with disabilities, i.e. electrosensitivity, people who are sensitive to microwaves, they cannot be discriminated against. So if you go to a road and you go, zonk, there is a transmitter, I'm sorry that three and a hundred of you, and it may not be three and a hundred, it may be the Irish Doctors Association who are uh, an in incredibly clever and knowledgeable uh, group of doctors and are really tip-top when it comes to radiation. They believe it may be as high as 15 in 100. So when the industry puts up a transmitter and says, I'm sorry, you're electrosensitive, you're just going to have to suffer or move, under United Nations law, <clears throat> that is illegal. They cannot do that. And we have the drawn up in this country, the Nuremberg Treaty. <clears throat> and the Nuremberg Treaty was signed by all of the nations of the world. And it is a very specific treaty. And what it says is that no human being will be experimented upon without his or her consent. And before they give consent... They have the legal right to understand all of the implications, the health problems, the future health problems, and they have the legal capacity to say no. And where this is relevant here um, is that... Uh, sorry, I, I've, I've lost my train of thought. You're going to have to cut this bit out. <clears throat> Um, the, the Nuremberg Treaty, there is only one exception with the Nuremberg Treaty, and that is a doctor such as yourself may experiment on his or herself only. That is the only exception. It is Section 5. So no human being is allowed to be experimented upon. Now, what the World Health Organization have said is that they are watching the adult population to 2015, the children's population from 2009. They are watching to see how many cancers, how many illnesses, how much neurological damage. It is a scientific health medical experiment. And in their wording you can read that it is an experiment, the wording they gave to the European Parliament. So what I would suggest to countries or people, they can, and again I'm not trained in law, but I would argue that they can invoke the Nuremberg Treaty and say, I do not wish to be a part of this global experiment. We signed the treaty and therefore you are breaking international law. That is my interpretation of what can be done. There is also one environmental law, <clears throat> which very few people know of. I think it was published in 2004, but seemed to have been lost and buried. But it is definitely there. And it's a very good one. It actually says that anybody who damages an environmental water supply, a habitat, an environment, any animals, any nature conserve conservatory, what's the word I'm looking for? Any nature area. conservation area, sorry, any, any nature conservation area, <clears throat> they say that is against European law now to damage any ecosystem, any environment. It is against European law. 
and it says the causer will pay the principal. In other words, if we have caused the bees to die, the crops to fail, the farm animals to die, the whole of the reparation bill can be sent straight to the mobile industry if they are taken to court and it is proven in front of a jury that they are guilty. They can be made to pay the principal. And not many people know that law exists, but it is law and it exists, and I have a copy of it. You raise some very, very interesting points there, not least the disappearance of the bees, the colony <coughs> collapse. Are they linked to the mobile phone industry? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt, and I'll tell you why. Uh, there are numerous papers now from beekeeping professors and scientists and there are even there is a brilliant mathematical paper which I read that everything about the poor bee uh, is designed to be irritated by microwaves the distance between the antenna, the size of the brain, the size of the body, they will all suffer resonance or unnatural vibration from microwave irradiation. The immune systems will collapse. The directional finding mechanism of the bee is destroyed. <clears throat> but what the industry and the governments will say is that not a single bee has been killed by microwave irradiation. And technically, they are correct. The same that we can say that not a single person has died from AIDS. Technically, that is correct. What we do know from analysis of bees uh, and we have the papers to show this, is that when the bees are found, they have five or six different infections, including invasion by the varroa mite. But when the, the blood and the body is analysed, they find five or six infections, which clearly indicate that the bees have suffered massive immune symptom suppression and invasion by the varroa mite. The same that people suffer immune system suppression from AIDS and then it is whatever virus or bacteria comes along that actually kills you. But there can be absolutely not a, shrip, not a shred of doubt that microwave irradiation is disorientating the bees and the birds and other flying insects, and there are 250 of them that pollinate plants. <clears throat> there can be not a shred of doubt that the microwave communications industry is responsible. And there is even, apart from the research, absolute concrete evidence of proof. <clears throat> you can go to any research paper, anywhere in the world, pick it up and look at the experiments that have been carried out on cells. And most of them have been carried out on small mammals, insects, birds, even bigger mammals. And they have found cancers, immune system problems, this, this and this. And it's documented. So... And the problem is, you have these huge laboratories and they say, well, we have found that microwaves will cause this and this and this, and here are all the list of the animals we used. <clears throat> but they forget one crucial sentence. They forget to say, aha, but these microwaves are actually outside the laboratory. And the animals are outside the laboratory. Therefore, we are going to damage the world's ecosystems and the environment because we've proved it here, now it's going to go on out there. And you can go to any research paper 
and you will see thousands and tens of thousands of experiments carried out on animals that show all of this. And it goes on outside. And there can be absolutely no doubt. And we can take this right back to the government proof from the government scientists, 50s, 60s and 70s. Why then do the governments continue to say it's the mites, <clears throat> it's a virus, it's a pesticide? I think, and I'm coming back to my silly boy mentality, I th governments are usually only in for four years. And or five years. And this is such a lucrative benefit for the people. This is my own theory. Uh, I believe that certainly for the UK government and some other governments, the ordinary members of parliament uh, are really powerless. Because like when we've had members of parliament standing up saying we've had child cluster of leukaemia cluster after leukaemia cluster, and I have a list of something like 200 clusters, not 200 children, 200 leukaemia clusters around transmitters, mostly near schools. And the MPs have stood up and asked about this, and at the end, a minister stands up and says, we are within international guidelines, sits down, and the whole thing is lost. So I believe that there are people above the ministers, maybe top civil servants, maybe top industrialists, I don't know, but I believe they are the real power <clears throat> behind what is going on, and they can direct governments. And I really believe that the government's do not have a choice. It comes down uh, in a threatening way from people who really have power. Um, uh, and I believe that is the problem. And we're back to my uh, silly boy. When you look at our, the chief of our MI6 and our prime minister, as I said, who were wondering what nappies were for when we were making the real decisions, and they do not have the wherewithal to come and talk to people like me. And I'm sure if they did, we could change things, but they won't see me, and, and that's the way it is. Uh, and I think that is the problem. They are only in for four or five years. They can live with it. They will get their knighthoods. They will get their reward, whatever their reward is, and they will pass the problem on to the next person. And I think that is the problem, is that they are not directly accountable. They inherited the problem, they will reap some of the benefits, they will pass it on. They are not being held directly responsible.